Hi Facebook, how are you? I thought I would take a much needed break. Break for everybody on Facebook. We're gonna talk about happy, amazing things on how we can improve our practice and how we can help our clients, athletes, and patients. So the next few minutes, we're going to do all positive energy where we're going to be looking at a foot x-ray and going through how you, a health and fitness professional, can use foot x-rays to understand how your client's foot function is going to translate to their programming, perhaps their performance, and of course, injury risk. So I'm going to be flipping this around. We're going to be taking a look at some x-rays here. Everything is going to be more confidential purpose. What we're looking at is what's called a AP view. A little bit straighter, AP view or a DP view of a foot x-ray. Now, even if you are a physical therapist or a coach, fitness professional, if your client or athlete happens to have copies of their own x-rays, I think that it is in good interest for you to take it upon yourself to look at all of their um, reports and x-rays so that you can better understand their foot function and how that applies to their programming and injury risk. So when we are looking at a foot x-ray, this view in particular, some big things that come into mind is we are looking at all these beautiful joints. These are your MPJs. This would be the lever of your foot. Remember that when we walk and we push off, we push two times your body weight in forces through these metatarsal heads. So the front of your foot is always taking more load than your rear foot. You walk, you strike your heel, you get one times your body weight, and then you push off two to two and a half times your body weight off of the front of the foot. The center of your foot is right here. This bone of your foot, which is the second metatarsal head, second metatarsal, second MPJ, is the part of the foot that, that takes the greatest amount of load and force. So controlling those forces is obviously very important. Other thing that we wanna look at when we look at the foot here is this is what's called a metatarsal parabola. It is the shape of the length of the metatarsals. And this actually is what gives your shoe last its shape. So the shape of our shoes is actually should not be too slanted this way and it should not be straight across. You actually want the proper foot, or sorry, shoe shape to match the shape of the foot parabola. Second metatarsal is always the longest metatarsal in the human foot. Metatarsals one and three should be the same length. So these length and that relationship is very important. If you have an athlete who has a first metatarsal that is the same length as their second metatarsal, they are susceptible to jamming the first MPJ and they can get a hallux limitus, hallux rigidus. So then they're going to have issues in the first MPJ. If you have issues in the first MPJ, we know that that can start to deactivate and shut off your glutes. That will start to destabilize your SI joint, your hip, your knees, all the way back down to your foot. So that's very important. Also looking here, we see our sesamoids. These are two bones that are underneath your first metatarsal head. They lie within the tendon of your flexor hallucis brevis. The purpose of your sesamoids, just like your kneecap or your patella, is to help transmit forces. So if we did not have the sesamoids, we would not be able to ambulate and transfer that amount of force through the first MPJ. The purpose of your flexor hallucis brevis is that it actually retracts and pulls the sesamoids back this way when you push off. So you're actually not rolling over your sesamoids. If you throw off the timing of how you push off your first MPJ and you don't get those sesamoids out of the way, that's actually how you can get sesamoiditis and sesamoid fractures. Other thing that we want to look at here, this is your navicular bone. Sometimes patients have an accessory navicular bone. If they have an exceptionally large navicular or that accessory bone, it's going to throw off the baseline tension of your posterior tibialis tendon, which then integrates into your pelvic floor. That's referred to as your deep front line. So any patient or client athlete that has an accessory navicular or a large navicular will start to have a deep front line or is susceptible to getting deep front line issues. Last thing that I want to point out is right here, this is referred to as your first ray. This is your met cuneiform joint. That is the epicenter of a bunion. So bunions are not a first MPJ issue. They are actually a first 
ray issue. And what often happens is they have an instability at the met cuneiform joint. You can see how this is kind of angled. When you lose stability of this joint, that allows the first metatarsal to swing up to the side, and then the toe comes in this way. And that's what creates that classic bunion. I'm going to show you one more x-ray. I'm going to turn you just momentarily to the side for patient privacy reasons so that all of this is kept confidential. And then we will show you this one other x-ray. Okay, so here we go. Your next x-ray here. This will be the last one that I look at. What we can see here, very apparent, if you can see here, not only does this patient have a slight bunion, and this x-ray is actually a little bit oblique, it should be straight on. I did not take this x-ray. So here, this joint is very narrow, so this patient will be experiencing some hallux limitus, some pain in their first MPJ. They most likely have what's called crepitus, which is a sign of arthritis. It's kind of that rice crispy grinding of the joint. Their sesamoids are in alignment, but again, this is an oblique view, so we're not looking at it straight on. We start to see some spurring going on here, so if you touch the joint, you would probably be able to palpate and feel that joint along there. A little bit larger navicular here. My suspicion would be that this patient has a little bit of a flat foot or unstable rear foot because of this, which then translates into the metcuniform joint and the first ray, and then that will then translate over into the first MPJ. Other thing that we can take in a little bit is that this first metatarsal is maybe a little bit longer than it should be, which will also contribute to that. My guess is this patient, which is not my patient, came in for a first MPJ pathology. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Other views that you can look at would be a lateral view. From that lateral view, you can look at the positioning and the pitch of the calcaneus and the metatarsals. However, this gives you a very good view on how to start looking at the foot x-ray and how you can actually screen out some of the risk factors for your clients, athletes, and patients. I hope you enjoyed. Let's stay happy and positive. I will see you soon and stay barefoot strong.